Hi, welcome to our channel of IGNU Audiobooks, Indira Gandhi National Open University, School of Law, Sol, Certificate. Post-Graduate Certificate in Patent Practice, PGCPP. MIR 0 to 1 Overview of Intellectual Property Rights. Block 1 Intellectual Property Rights, Concepts and Forms. Unit 1 General Overview of Intellectual Property. 1.1 Introduction. We encounter intellectual property at every step of our lives today. The design on the bed sheet and the pillow covers, the bed and other items of furniture in the house, the cereals for breakfast, the pasteurized milk in Tetra Pak, the soft drinks and their bottles, the television, the personal computer, the gas stove, the microwave, the refrigerator, the Vehicles, the weighing machine, the books, the films, the music cassettes, the tiles, the paints, and practically everything we use is the product of human ingenuity, knowledge, and skill, besides labor and capital, and normally falls under some kind of intellectual property that had to be respected before the item could be lawfully manufactured or marketed. 1.2 Objectives after studying this unit, you should be able to times appreciate the concept of intellectual property vis-à-vis physical property. Times learn the different categories of intellectual property. Times appreciate the rationale behind LP and the underlying premises. Times understand how a balance is sought to be achieved between the rights of the owner of IP on the one hand and the rights of other individuals and the society in general on the other, and times know the position of IP under the Constitution of India. 1.3 The concept of intellectual property. Intellectual property rights, IPRs, are an institution to protect the crucial parts of capital, including the valuation of the man-hours invested in the creation of certain types of objects which have been accepted as subject matter of intellectual property. The IPRs are characterized as exclusionary rights in the subject matter. The subject matter, i.e., invention or screenplay, over which rights are granted may be termed as intellectual property, IP. Intellectual property has an inability that it cannot be protected by physical possession. For example, a carburetor with a new invented feature is sold in the market. Devoid of IP in it, a book incorporating the screen play is sold minus the IP in the screen. Play The genesis When new or original imagination or ideas are used and machines or other products are produced, such subject matter is given in exclusive domain of the initiator by excluding others from their use, which are known as IPRs. The IPRs fall in common domain after a fixed period of time, except trademarks and geographical indications which are perpetual. An intellectual property, IP, regime was necessary to create order in industrial activity. The absence of IPRs would result in chaos, as anybody would free ride the invention or the product made earlier by the initiator. In such a circumstance, the investment made by the first entrepreneur in human effort and capital investment in making the innovation, research and production facilities would become unproductive or diminish in value. Times IPRs are, thus, necessary tools to protect the above inputs. Sometimes IP is equated only with creativity of mind. In fact, in 19th century the term IP was used to connote industrial property and copyright combined. The expression industrial property never had a connotation emphasizing intellectual effort but was always related to protection of human and capital investment. JP versus property The concept of IP is also to be understood by knowing what is meant by the term property. To a layperson, property means some material object belonging to a particular person. 
the concept of ownership is critical to the concept of property. Ownership means the right to possess, use and dispose of the property and exclude the others. If a society does not recognize ownership, it will have no concept of property. In the legal sense, property refers to the bundle of rights that the law confers on a person by virtue of the ownership and possession of an object. However, a material object under one's possession may not amount to much as property. If it does not become a resource to satisfy some human want or need, man by exertion of his intellect, either in the form of ideas or technology, converts a natural resource into something of utility, making it an item of property. Two factors significantly influence the value of an object as property. The first is scarcity, which refers to its availability in relation to the need. The scarcer is a thing in relation to the demand for it, the higher is its value. The second important factor influencing the value of an object is the knowledge of its use or uses. The higher the value of an object, the more zealously is it guarded as a property. What rights constitute the bundle of rights that are termed as property? These rights deal with various aspects of the relationship between persons and their property, such as ownership and possession, use and enjoyment of the fruits of its application, exclusion of others from use and application of the property, and transfer of rights in the property. Tangible versus intangible. The property can relate to a tangible thing e.g. land or buildings or to an intangible thing e.g. CL copyright. In the former case they are referred to as tangible or corporeal property. In the latter case they are known as intangible or incorporeal property. Tangible property has a big advantage over intangible property, the fact of possession of a physical object by the owner ensures that any other person is excluded from using it. It is not so with the creations of the mind, say, an invention or a book which can be reproduced otherwise. The peculiarity of IP is that after parting with the product incorporating IP, the recipient is ordained not to use the content covered by ALP. The intellectual property is the property created by the application of human mind, is non-physical, intangible, and it derives its value from ideas. IP reflects incorporation of wealth as the exclusionary rights enhance the opportunity to the owner of IP to make money with the help of IP and by licensing of IP against royalty. ALP has enormous capacity of generation of wealth by following an ALP strategy of Establishing production facilities, marketing quality products, and building a permanent constituency of customers through powerful trademarks. The value of trademark Coke is estimated to be more than US $75 billion. Many path-breaking inventions have helped their owners in earning billions of dollars. IP is private property vested in one person or the other liable to assignment and licensing. The legal regimes of countries determine the ownership of IP rights. However, the geographical indications, GLS, belong to the community in a defined area and anyone in the area on fulfilling the stipulated attributes would have the right to use the GL. Looking at the diverse subjects or areas which are protected as intellectual property in different countries, it may be said that there is no uniform test or definition of intellectual property, rather it is impossible to have a definition of IP. Various categories of IP derive their color from the power exercised and the agreement achieved at the national regional or international level in relation to a particular type of protection. Adjustment of rights, not only new subject matter may be added to ALP, but the rights are also subject matter of adjustment. In TRIPS rights of right holders have been enhanced. 
across the board in patents or trademarks, whereas in 1967 revision of the Paris and Bern conventions the concerns of developing countries were addressed. The inclusion or exclusion of various things in the list of IP and the quality or level of protection I granted to a particular form of IP depends on power structures within and without a given country. The kinds of IP included and level of protection agreed to in the agreement on trade-related intellectual property rights, TRIPS, reflects such power structure at the time of negotiations. The domain of IP is expanding fast as knowledge and information become key drivers of techno-economic growth and of societal progress in general. Thus, IP is a dynamic area as science and technology make rapid advances and as competition for markets becomes ever more fierce, human ingenuity is throwing up ever new ideas and newer products. New areas are emerging with claims for recognition as IP. They have to be accommodated as IP either in one of the existing categories or in new categories that have to be created. Thus why copyright originally was concerned with works of literature and artistic works gradually its scope expanded to cover works of drama, music, photography, cinematography, audiovisual recordings, performances, broadcasts, and computer programs. Another category which got recognition is computer-generated works. Among the successful new categories to be recognized as entitled to the status of IP are geographical indications which combining themselves appellations of origin and indication of source and accord special treatment to wines and spirits, layout design. Topography, of integrated to orchids, which has been recognized as an independent form of IP under the agreement on trade-related aspects of the intellectual property rights. TRIPS Agreement of the World Trade Organization, WTO. Genetic resources and traditional knowledge and folklore have made strong claims for protection as ALP. Business. Methods and sound trademarks are knocking for recognition. Galloping advances in the realm of internet and convergence may be the harbinger of new forms of IP. Once a new method of manufacture, a new design, an idea, a piece of music or a trade. Mark is made available to the public in general, its creator can no longer physically restrict or regulate its use by others. This inability of protecting by possession and the urge to exclude others from the method, idea, music or trademark underlies the concept of recognition of intellectual property rights. Thus ALP, by its very nature, can only be protected by resort to IP laws or use of state aid forced through the process of courts or administratively. If the legitimate state aid force is not available for protection of ALP or for enforcement of IPRs, the IPR holder would either take measures to protect his investment or would not invest in the concerned subject matter. 1.3 Different Categories of IP Instruments IP has been generally divided into two main branches with A. Industrial Property and B. Copyright Industrial property consists of rights relating to inventions, i.e. patents, trademarks, industrial designs, and geographical indications. Copyright protects rights related to creation of human mind in the fields of literature, scientific, music, art and audiovisual works, etc. Related rights protect performances of performing artists, phonograms and broadcasts. Related rights and neighboring rights are terms used interchangeably. The TRIPS Agreement of the WTO recognizes seven categories of intellectual property. Rights, IPRs, which had already been enshrined in various treaties administered by the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Some of them have their origin in the late 19th century. 
I. Copyright and related rights. 2. Trademarks, trade names and service marks. Ill. Geographical indications. 4. Industrial designs. V. Patents. 6. Layout designs of integrated circuits. 7. Undisclosed information. The following new areas are also emerging. Times the traditional knowledge also referred as indigenous knowledge has been accepted as a subject matter of IP on which TRIPS Council is deliberating. Times patenting of business methods have been recognized as full-fledged IP in USA. Therefore the debate has onset in the rest of the world. Times the law of protection of celebrities or right to publicity is a distinct branch now. Times conservation of biodiversity is projected as part of IPRs and convention on. Biodiversity is considered as providing rights akin to IPRs. In India the Biological Diversity Act 2003 has been passed and brought into effect from 1st July 2004. It would be apparent there is nothing common in above seven items. The only thing common in IPRs is that they are exclusionary rights, i.e. the owner can exclude others from the subject matter for a fixed duration. Copyright is granted in respect of original literary, musical, artistic or audiovisual works. The creations of authors, playwrights, composers, artists, filmmakers. The rights under copyright include rights of reproduction, communication to the public, adaptation, and translation of work. Copyright is now spoken together with the related or neighboring rights as one category. Though originality in expression is a requirement for copyright, the quality of the works is not an issue at all. It is to be noted that though the copyright subsists in works which are the creation of ideas, it is not the idea that the copyright protects, but merely the expression of the idea. As fixed in a particular form. If an author thinks up the plot of a story, it is not the idea of the plot that is entitled for protection under a copyright, but only the written form of the story flowing from the idea. Any other person can come up with a differently written story on the same idea and have a valid claim for a copyright over it. If a painter has a copyright in a painting which depicts Sunri say no one else can legally copy that painting without his her permission. However, there is no copyright in the idea of Sunri say and anybody is free to paint Sunri say as per his her own imagination and everyone will be entitled to copyright in one's own creation. The copyright is in the painting, not in the idea of Sunri say. The copyright is based on the doctrine of sweat of the bro and is a reward for effort, labor and expenditure of skill in creating the work. The justification for copyright and expression also lies in the fact that the authors contribute new and original ideas which immediately go to public domain, even though there is no need of the idea to be new or novel. Copyright is an inherent right that commences since the completion of the work as an expression of the idea. Copyright comes with the doctrine of fair use, which includes use of the work for purposes of criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching and education, scholarship and research. Fair use does not constitute infringement. We may also remember that unlike patents or registered designs, copyright confers no monopoly. Rights In fact, if two persons can produce precisely similar work demonstrably working independently of each other, each one will have the legal right to his her own creation. A copyright work is protected from its creation. It should be reiterated that registration is not required for a work to be protected under copyright law. Trademarks, trade names and service marks. A trademark is any sign that individualizes the goods or services of a given enterprise and 
distinguishes them from the goods or services of its competitors. Reference to goods is to be construed as reference to both goods or services unless services cannot be included in the context. This definition presumes to functions of a trademark, first, indicating the source or origin of the product, and second, economically more important, giving a product a distinct personality of its own. In the market-driven economies of today, trademarks are an important source of product differentiation and non-price competition, particular one early in the consumer. Goods sector A consumer associates certain qualities with products available in the market. Under different trademarks, a trademark helps them attach such characteristics as durability, performance, efficiency and after-sales service to a particular product sold at a value under that brand. Consider the soft drinks market in the country. The brand names Pepsi and Coke. Differentiate the two beverages on the shelf. A consumer attaches certain qualities to the drinks. Pepsi is a trifle sweeter than Coke or Coke has that extra zing and this helps him. Choose the next time he wants a drink depending on his taste. The perception needs to be noted. A consumer, in making such a choice, makes certain assumptions about the quality of the product. He expects the same taste from each Pepsi bottle because he expects the manufacturer to maintain certain standards, irrespective of who makes the product or where it is made. Hence, a trademark creates a phantom manufacturer who through assembly line production and modern technology ensures that goods of uniform quality are made available to the consumer time and again, unfailingly. Notion of quality, the trouble with this perception is that it is only notional. Throughout the world, trademark laws do not require the proprietor to maintain any particular or declared quality. The question is rather of a firm's own interest. If the proprietor feels that benefits from lowering quality outweigh the loss in market share it may suffer, there is no stopping it from selling an inferior quality product. If consumer X feels that Coke tastes better in the USA, he cannot do anything with trademark laws to force Coca-Cola Co. to sell the same brew in India. If anything, he may have to look to unfair competition or the consumer protection laws to seek redress. To put it differently, what is at stake for the proprietor of the trademark is the goodwill he has been able to create for the particular brand. This consumer goodwill is the measure of the success of a trademark and, hence, the source of its economic value. Building goodwill requires heavy investments and marketing. For the actual domain of goodwill is partly in the sphere of consumer psychology and partly in the mundane world of quality, consistency and other such concrete notions. Market power. The inunion's economic value that a successful trademark has is the primary reason for their protection in law. From a benefit to society point of view, a justification lies in their role in facilitating consumer choice. But the concept itself functions in favor of the proprietor. With widespread brand proliferation and numerous firms manufacturing similar products, it makes sense for the proprietor to want to appropriate returns on investments he makes on brand building. Their protection against unlicensed use is, as a general rule, a just concept. What is missing is a balancing force to counter the overwhelming market power of successful trademarks. The balance needs to come through greater responsibility on the part of the trademark owner. The need, if at all, is for a legislation that forces trademark owners to ensure a certain level of quality of their products, or at least what they hold out. Perpetual exclusive use in a territory, 
trademark law gives an exclusive right to the owner of the mark over its use. He can prevent the use of similar or identical signs by competitors if such marks can lead to confusion. Trademark laws are, however, national in character, which has far-reaching implications which are looked at in detail in the book. The term of protection of trademarks is unlimited. In other words, they may be owned in perpetuity. Service marks, trade and domain names, an extension of the concept of trademarks, is to the service industry. Service marks are signs used by enterprises to identify their services, such as travel agencies, hotels, telephone companies and airlines. In legal parlance, brand names are known as trademarks and enterprise names as trade names, both are protected against unauthorized use and constitute intellectual property. Trade names refer to the name of the business enterprise as a whole. They identify an enterprise and its activities without any reference to the goods and services it puts on the market. The choice of trade Marx is expanding. The 1999 Act has given sanction to adoption of shapes as trade. Marx. However, sound and smell trade marks await acceptance by the Committee of Nations. Even though they have been accepted by a few countries. The domain name on the internet is latest addition to the expression which are protected as. Signposts. The judicial systems world over are agreeable that the phenomenon has its parallel in trademarks and have commenced applying the same law for their protection. Besides uniform dispute resolution policy adopted by the ICANN, the organization responsible for allocation of the domain names, the uniform dispute resolution policy is administered by World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Trademarks and service marks are distinctive symbols, signs, logos that help the consumer to distinguish between competing goods or services and are a major part of the goodwill a company enjoys in the trade. A trade name is the name of an enterprise, which also individualizes the enterprise in the minds of the customers. They are, therefore, protected as IP. Thus a trademark is a sign that individualizes the goods of a given enterprise and distinguishes them from the goods of its competitors. You may be quite familiar with the distinctive marks of Pepsi Cola and Coca-Cola companies. Similarly, in passenger cars a characteristic star in front or a characteristic tree like T enclosed in an ellipse and displayed in the front and the rear of a vehicle immediately proclaims that the first vehicle is from the Mercedes and the second one is from the Tata stable. Trademark is superimposed on the good or services and does not add to the features of the goods or services. Trademarks invariably come to symbolize quality of goods or services in the customer's mind. However, there is no requirement in law that trade. Mark has to meet any quality standards. If quality is not maintained, customers will shift to another brand. A mark to be a trademark is required to be distinctive and cannot be deceptive or confusing. If you market goods of fake leather under the trademark, real leather you will be taken in by a deceptive trademark. Geographical indication. A geographical indication, GI, is a sign used on goods that have a specific geographical origin and poses qualities or a reputation that are due solely to the place of origin e.g. its specific climate, soil or method of production. Such goods enjoy an advantage over competing goods solely because of their geographical origin which thus becomes a kind of IP and is protected. A GI is different from a trademark. A trademark is a sign that distinguishes the product and services of an enterprise from those of another. The owner of a trademark is entitled to exclude 
others from using the trademark. A GI merely tells that a product is produced in a certain place and has certain characteristics which are due to the place of production, like specific soil or climate or method of production. It can be used by all producers who make their products in a place designated by the GI and share the same qualities. Some best-known examples of GI are champagne, special kind of sparkling wine, originating in the French region of that name, Kolhapuri Chapel from Kolhapur, India. The Paris Convention for the Protection of Industrial Property uses two terms in the context of geographical indication, appellation of origin and indication of source. Indication of source on a product merely indicates that the product originates in the place indicated. Appellation of origin indicates not only the place of origin but also the essential quality link between the product and the area of its origin. Protection of GI can be done in many ways through a sui generis legislation or through decrees or through registration or through reliance on tort of passing off, which basically says that unfair trade practices should not be used. GI can also be protected by collective marks belonging to a group of traders or producers or a certification trademark that does not belong to any one individual but to a group or association of producers with an understanding at the time of registration that anyone who meets the specified conditions can use it after following the procedure. Industrial design An industrial design is the ornamental or aesthetic aspect of an article. It may consist of three-dimensional features such as shape or surface, or of two-dimensional features such as patterns, lines or color. The design serves as a tool for Product differentiation and lose customers by enhanced visual appeal. Industrial designs are applied to a wide variety of products of industry or handicraft, from watches, jewelry, fashion and other luxury items to industrial and medical implements, from houseware, furniture, electrical appliances to vehicles and architectural structures, from practical goods and textile designs to leisure items such as toys. An industrial design is distinguished from trademark primarily because it is constituted by the appearance of a product, which is not necessarily distinctive, whereas a trade mark is necessarily to be distinctive to serve as a sign for product differentiation. Design is applied to article and is thus integral part of the product as against trademark which is an adjunct to the goods and is not part of the goods. The functions of and the justification for protecting industrial deans and trademarks are quite different. Designs must relate to the appearance of the object which is not determined by technical or functional necessity. Designs enhance the visual appeal and act to the commercial value of the product. They also facilitate the marketing and commercialization of the product. For protection of a design, it is necessary that design should be registered. Only a new and original design may be registered though the notion of these qualities may vary from country to country. In certain conditions, an industrial design can be protected under copyright law or the law against unfair competition. The most practical test for determining the existence of a design is that if the design is removed from the article, the article should remain equally effective and workable. If the article does not function devoid of design, then it is not a design whatever else it may be in relation to the product. In such a situation, the features may be analyzed for any other IP right. A patent is a statutory right granted for a limited period to an inventor in respect of an invention to exclude any other person from manufacturing, using or selling the patented product or from using the patented process without due permission. Under the TRIPS Agreement of the WTO, inventions in all fields of technology, whether products or 
processes are patentable if they meet the three criteria of novelty involving an inventive step and being capable of industrial application. Patents are one of the oldest forms of IP protection. Layout design, topography of integrated circuits is a relatively new area in IP which has appeared with computer technology and has acquired importance as the technology makes rapid advances. The programming instructions on a computer chip are in implemented through a circuit reprinted on semiconductor layers. The design of circuitry on the chip requires great investment of knowledge, skills and capital and this needs to be protected as IP. The right and topography aims to prevent copying of the layout design. But reverse engineering to come up with improved design is regarded as fair. It may also be noted that while for claiming a patent, an invention is required to meet the criteria. Both of novelty and inventive step, a layout design is only required to be original. Protection of layout design confers no monopoly right, independent development of a design, identical with a protected design, is permitted. Undisclosed information gets recognition as a kind of LP that needs to be protected. Under the TRIPS Agreement Earlier to it, the WIPO Treaty, 1967, and the Paris Convention recognized unfair competition as a part of LP. Unfair competition includes all acts contrary to honest practices in industrial or commercial matters, undisclosed. Information restricts honest practices to protection of trade secrets. The TRIPS Agreement, Article 40, does refer to the control of anti-competitive practices. In contractual licenses, the agreement also empowers member states to make in their national legislation suitable provisions to prevent abuse of LPRs. The divide in knowledge about IP in developing countries and developed countries is a matter of concern. The non-exercise of power by governments in developing countries under Article 40 may be attributable either to lack of knowledge with the bureaucrats or corruption in high places or sometimes as a trade-off in the desire to have contributions of IP ignoring the predatory practices. The intellectual property thus rests in a creation of human mind involving knowledge, labor and skill. It is the result of sustained intellectual application and efforts of inventors, authors and other creative persons, including first adapters and is a powerful factor of production and wealth generation in a modern economy. The IP is a significant factor in Gaining competitive advantage over rivals in the trade and industry as the entire idea of IP is to protect the owner against its unlawful use by any person or party offering same or similar products or services. IPRs, as their exercise has evolved in practice, can secure for the owner a broad range of advantages depending on the national law for example. IPRs can effectively block imports or exports of relevant goods, or they can be used to divide markets or restrict movement of goods produced by an enterprise from one territory to another. To fully comprehend the consequences of a national legislation in matters of LPR, it is important to grasp the purpose the law seeks to serve by creating these private rights in property. The chain of production to distribution of goods involves the following major steps, manufacture, first sale by the manufacturer, subsequent sales, exports, imports, use, other dealings. It is for the state to decide in which steps it should intervene to grant exclusive rights to the owner to ensure just reward for creative activity and best techno-economic returns for the state and the Society. A point to appreciate here is that IP is concerned with the human capacity to produce something new and offer it for public use. The property does not lie in the thing so produced and offered but in the owner's rights over the creation of his her intellect. 
this intellectual property is intangible and though in each case it is associated with a tangible object it is independent of the object itself normally all iprs involve the right to restrain others from exploiting the thing subject created by the right holder to public even though the public might have the knowledge and or equipment to use the same necessarily such restraint can be enforced by assertion of power and also by inculcating a habit to obey the law moreover what ip protects is the use or value of ideas and not the abstract ideas themselves there are no rights hence no property over the ideas per se if you are looking for protecting an idea then in case idea is concretized into an invention it would be protected as patent or if the idea is expressed then the expression would be protected but making the idea available to all for use as part of public knowledge 1.5 rationale behind intellectual property just as one goes back to the concept of property to appreciate better the meaning of intellectual property one may look to the justifications advanced for protection of tangible property to appreciate the justification for ip within the capitalist system such justification comes from two angels the labor justification and the personality justification the labor justification was propounded by loke who viewed the labor of an individual as belonging to the individual and when one takes from the state what nature has provided to it some goods akin to commons and mixes one's labor with it one creates property for oneself labor adds value to the goods and converts commons into property the creation of social value both by converting commons into goods and adding more value to goods by investment of labor deserves to be rewarded too encourage people to be innovative as also to perform better in moving from the tangible property to the intellectual property both the views rewarding innovation as well as rewarding value creation have relevance the society has to encourage people to strive to be innovative and come up with creative solutions to generate wealth and welfare as also to add value to existing goods and services loke's idea of occurrence of commons in abundance in the primitive stage is apt in the consideration of intellectual property because ideas are always around us in abundance this is the public domain the iprs do not appropriate the public domain the commons are no body's private property the ip law takes care of it by ensuring that no protection is given to either the everyday ideas or highly extraordinary ideas like advances in mathematics the ip law takes care that nobody unduly appropriates public domain by ensuring that the rights are available only for a limited period after which the intellectual creation comes to the public domain here we draw attention to a rather subtle parallel between the fields of tangible property and the intangible intellectual property in the field of tangible property the rights of slaves as generators of property were not recognized even now the labor of housewife fetches no remuneration and remains unrecognized as generator of wealth similarly in the realm of ip the traditional knowledge and folklore is yet to gain solid recognition as ip and enjoys no commensurate protection as the creation of knowledge skills and ideas developed and perfected by local communities over centuries this only confirms the view that property laws whether for the tangible property or the intellectual property reflect power relations in society the justification for ip from the personality angle regards property as a mechanism of expression of one's persona hegel is the main proponent of this view property is the embodiment of personality thus property is a very personal and private thing and needs to be protected in the case of the intellectual property however this justification 
may apply in varying degrees to subject matters of different categories of IP. Why? Products of art, music and literature and trademarks may reflect the personality of their creator to a remarkable degree. The inventions or engineering designs may not really support the personality thesis. A major recognition for the personality justification of property is seen in the moral rights under the copyright law. These are deemed to be the inalienable rights of the author to safeguard the integrity of the work against any change that would damage the author's reputation or the message of the work. The moral rights were not incorporated. In trips, clearly a completely satisfactory rationale for intellectual property protection is not available either from the labor angle or the personality angle. Different categories of IP would appear to derive different degrees of justification from different angels. Patents and industrial designs would be better supported from the labor point of view, copyrights. And trademarks would find better justification from the personality angle. The entire domain of the LP, however, is served better when both the views are taken together as justification for the protection of property. Underlying premises From the foregoing discussions, it is seen that the IPRs are based on three underlying premises. One, creative activity culminating in IP can be increased by measures aimed to encourage it. Also, it will not be generated in economically adequate quantity for public use without economic incentives. 2. Grant of legal monopoly powers, even if for a limited period, with inbuilt safeguards of compulsory licensing and permission to deal with abuse of IPRs through normal or competition laws, is the way to ensure adequate economic benefits as just. Reward for the creation of IP and its public disclosure. 3. The provisions of the global IP regime ensure just economic returns to the creation of IP while safeguarding the interest of other entrepreneurs and the society in general. 1.6 Rights of the ONU Of the LP, other individuals and the society striking a balance. It will be well to remember here that whatever be the justification for the protection of intellectual property, there can be no absolute rights in IP because all individual rights are subject to the recognition of and respect for the rights of other individuals and the rights of the society. It is the role of the state and the purpose of the law to harmonize conflicting claims and achieve a balance. Besides, the state, through the instrumentality of law, strives to reach definite goals in keeping with the aspirations of the society. The property rights are therefore generally tempered with considerations of distributive justice. Protection of individual property is important but it is equally important in a democratic polity that the state create conditions and necessary structures for people to have widespread access to opportunities. It is this balancing responsibility of the state which is reflected in the Indian law, while private property is respected and legally protected, private property is no more a fundamental right. In a competitive world while creativity and continuous innovation is absolutely necessary to remain on the scene, it is also equally important to ensure that one's ideas, products and designs are not copied without authorization. Similarly, one must learn how to acquire lawfully another person's ideas, products and designs for further reproduction and use in one's own business. Essentially, IPRs are defined in the negative and meant to stop others from copying or counterfeiting of the protected application or expression of an idea without due. Permission In the case of patents, even a person who arrives at the same invention independently of the owner of the right is prohibited to exploit it without a license from the owner of the right. In other forms of the IPE, G. For copyright or trademark, absolute monopoly of the owner of the right may be suitably diluted. However, it should be clear that the grant of LPRs is to be seen in the context of rights of others, 
which are not to be ignored, and a public interest which remains paramount. In the field of intellectual property, the rights of the individual owner are sought to be balanced with the rights of others, including the wider public interest, by several means like limiting the period during which exclusive IPRs are available to a reasonable degree, making preservation of life, environment, peace, morality as paramount conditions in granting IPRs if the IPR would have an adverse impact on any of these, it is not granted, providing for compulsory licensing of patent or copyright, or even revocation under certain circumstances e.g. If the owner abuses the patent right simply to block others, with the result that the benefits of the IP do not flow to the public at reasonable cost, etc. Moreover, the goods or services offered under IPRs can be subjected to price controls, as all other goods can be. The Art 40 of TRIPS envisions that abuse of IPRs may be dealt with by non-discriminatory competition laws and predatory practices be prohibited. 1.7 Certain Fetchers of IP Time-limited negative rights, intellectual property rights, IPRs, accepting trade. Marks are time-limited ownership rights. They are negative rights in the sense that they are a right of the owner to restrain others from doing certain things or control its use of the subject matter by others without the owner's consent. Concrete public disclosure or use IP is recognized or comes into existence only when the ideas or concepts get concretized into tangible form. This tangible form incorporated into a product or another tangible thing reproduced by a process is intangible property in which IPRs are recognized. An expressed idea has a copyright. If it can be reduced to an embodiment, it can be patented. Ideas per se cannot be protected except to a limited extent as trade secrets or undisclosed information. For intellectual property to come into existence, a basic condition is the documentation and public use of the subject matter, along with the claim that it is desired to be protected. As intellectual property, for example, more often ideas are required to be converted into the form of a work to be able to enjoy copyright. Proper trademark rights emanate from the public use of a trademark. An invention specifications and claims have to be documented and are to be disclosed to the patent office. An industrial design has to be documented by obtaining design copyright by depositing the copies of the design with the concerned design office. One can also own IP by disclosing one's idea or visualization of a trademark or the results of an invention or the trappings of a design to confidence. This is protected as undisclosed information form of intellectual property, protected. Under Article 39 of TRIPS Tool of Wealth Generation When we talk about generating wealth with the help of IPR still that there is no doubt that there is an impending possibility of wealth generation. The question is wealth generation for whom? Is it for the right holder or is it for the licensee? Is there any entitlement of consumers to fair and reasonable prices of IPR products? Can there be wealth for all the players? If consumer is charged higher prices for IPR products, he is deprived of wealth. If a licensee is called upon to cater to unreasonable demands of the right holder, it is deprivation of wealth for the recipient of an IPR. If the right holders or licensor happen to be MNCs or the persons of developed countries and licensee happens to be from India, then the wealth of India is transferred to such foreign right holders or licensors and also from the country. Beneficial to right holders, IPRs allow its holder a right to exclude others from certain business opportunities. They may be production or marketing opportunities or adoption of a design for a product or use of the celebrity endorsements or any knowledge or entertainment expressed in any medium. IPRs, though presented as exclusive rights, 
are in fact a monopoly of sorts. In the field of patents and semiconductor chips it works. Out as a larger monopoly than in the field of geographical indications, GI, trademarks. Designs and copyright. In the latter, the goods can be produced, but are required to have different brand name or design for the product or expression for the same idea. Thus, in these areas IPRs are twin tools of monopoly and competition. Very few persons in developing countries understand this nature of IPRs, the functionaries of government, and powers that be appreciate the view of the right holders more as they are organized and take pains to spread their viewpoint with all their power, wealth and might. Stated differently, IPRs are incorporation of wealth and property. An invention made, a portrait drawn or a film made, a design developed, or trademarks or geographical indication developed into a reputed indication, all achieve sales and all are subject. Matters of IPRs When other persons are excluded from the product or design or from sales, naturally these generate wealth for their owners. Any product, thing or right which generates wealth for its owner is property and to be safeguarded. In the absence of IPRs no one may w1 data tilde to venture an invention or other subject matter of IPRs or Make a film. The IPRs provide legal means to recover the investment by extending a monopoly in relation to its subject matter for a fixed duration. Benefits to society, grant of exclusive rights to enjoy IP does not mean that society is deprived of enjoying the fruits of intellectual output. An IPR is granted in exchange for the disclosure of invention, design or bringing the underlying idea to public knowledge. In fact, society benefits greatly by the intellectual effort of others. On a normative plane, an IPR is infringed when somebody either seeks to commercially exploit the IP of the right holder or takes steps whereby the benefit accruing to the right holder is sought to be dried or the sales of the right holder are hampered. The public may validly derive many advantages from IP. For example, by reading an idea in a book, a person may invent a whole machine. He may learn the art of marketing or become wiser and may write a book on the same subject, but he cannot copy the book or do things which shall deprive the sales of such book, even though a patent gives exclusive right to a patentee. To exploit his invention for a period of 20 years, but the specifications of invention can be used for further research, advancement and development from the day one and the results of further research can also be patented. 1.8 Enforcement of IPRs While most contracts lay down clearly and in detail the rights and obligations of Contracting parties, any disputes that arise in connection with the contract can be resolved. On the basis of provisions in the contract itself, what is different with IPR is the fact that it is aimed at excluding others from doing certain things as regards the IP even without the existence of a formal contract between them and the owner of the right. The Effectiveness of IPRs is clearly dependent on how speedily they can be enforced with reasonable cost as requirement of space for storage of information and means and cost of copying. Tumble down with the advance of information and communication technologies, the scale and incidence of copying reproduction have greatly increased. Piracy and counterfeiting are the scourge of the world trade. In books, films, music, computer, programs, pharmaceuticals and consumer goods, infringement of IPR on commercial. Scale is rampant. While national laws provide legal remedies for violations of IPRs, the TRIPS agreement lays down the provisions which must be included in the national IP laws and regulations. 
of all member countries of the WTO to enable effective enforcement of IPRs. The remedies are meant to deter incidents of future infringement without harming legitimate trade while safeguarding against the abuse of IPRs. The TRIPS agreement prescribes a number of requirements for a due process in IP. Law-like fair and equitable procedures, not being unduly complicated or costly and not entailing unreasonable time limits or unwarranted delays, right to be heard and give evidence, right to written decision, judicial review, etc., including indemnification of Defendant Against Abuse of Enforcement Procedures The remedies that the courts may grant can be both injunctive and compensatory relief the defendant may be asked to deliver up the infringing material for destruction as a requirement of justice. 1.9 Abuse of IPRs The kind of exclusive rights which IPRs bestow upon the right holders enable them to Exercise predatory or restrictive or unfair business practices making the cost of subject. Matter of the IPR excessive for the users. The member countries were mindful of such practices of the right holders and therefore declared some practices as abuse of abuse. And also allowed the member governments to declare more such actions as abuse of IPRs. Article 40 is inserted in TRIPS text before the articles facilitating enforcement of IPRs. 1.10 IP and the Constitution of India The Constitution of India makes no specific mention of intellectual property. Property in the Constitution generally means tangible property. However, IP as a form of property can be put under Article 300 of which deals with property and be entitled to a legal right. Experts have spotted possibilities of a conflict between the ALP, especially the copyright, and the constitutionally guaranteed freedom of speech and expression. The courts have zealously upheld this fundamental freedom. In a case of any restriction on speech, an expression, the perspective of the rights of viewers and listeners, is likely to get precedence over the perspective of the rights of broadcasters. Any rights, monopolies, that undermine the right to freedom of speech and expression may face a challenge. 1.11 Summary Times the concept of intellectual property follows the concept of physical property which is inalienably linked to the concept of ownership of an article and means the right to poses, use and dispose of the article, property. Times intellectual property is considered the creation of human intellect as it recognizes the labor, effort and investment put in by individuals. It is intangible, incorporeal. Whereas the physical property is tangible, corporeal. Times property means a bundle of rights in relation to the zero object owned. They concern ownership and possession, use and enjoyment of the fruits of application of the property and the exclusion of others from such use and enjoyment and the transfer of rights in the property. Times the TRIPS agreement under the WTO recognizes seven categories of IP whiz. I. Copyright and related rights, 2. Trademarks and service marks, 3. Geographical Indication, 4. Industrial designs, V. Patents, 6. Layout designs of integrated circuits, 7. Undisclosed information. However, the domain of IP is expanding and soon. New claimants may arise due to rapid advances in science and technology. Times the rationale behind IP flows from the labor angle or the personality angle. The former sees labor as belonging to the individual who creates new goods by mixing his her labor with the commons or adds value to the goods with investment of labor. Either way he she is to be encouraged and rewarded. The personality view regards the creation of intellect as an expression of the creator's persona and thus a very personal thing that needs to be regarded and protected as property. 
Neither of the two angels can satisfactorily serve as justification for all categories of IP. While inventions may have little that will qualify them as expression of the inventor's persona, a literary or artistic or musical composition is likely to bear the stamp of the author in a substantial measure. Thus the rationale for IP has to be sought both in the labor angle and the personality angle together, rather than in any of them singly. The state, and through it the global IP regime, seeks to strike a balance between the interests of the creator of the IP and the interests of the other entrepreneurs and the society in general. The means that ensure this balance are grant of monopoly exclusive rights generally for a limited period after which the intellectual creation comes into the public domain, provision for compulsory licensing and even revocation of license under certain conditions in the case of patents and making preservation of life, environment, peace, morality as of paramount. Consideration while granting IPRs. Times the TRIPS agreement of the WTO prescribes enforcement measures to be incorporated in national laws for ensuring effective, speedy and cheap remedies against violation of IPRs. The process is to be fair and equitable and conscious of time and cost. While ensuring justice, it should create no barriers for world trade. Nor should it lead to abuse of enforcement. The remedies can be injunctive and compensatory. The courts can also order infringing material to be delivered up for destruction, if necessary, to meet the ends of justice. Times Times the Constitution of India makes no specific mention of IP. However, there is nothing in the Constitution that would bar treatment of IP under property clauses. A. Possible area of conflict may arise between copyright and the freedom of speech. An expression which is a right constitutionally guaranteed and zealously upheld by the judiciary. Thank you. Subscribe.